Dr. Nick Vegas is our guest for the rest of this segment, and i got a bunch of news and your calls we'll be getting into. John, Mark, Bill, Donna, we'll get to at least you for Dr. Nick Vegas here in a moment. But he said something that really struck home for me that I've been really focusing on lately, and that's that we're not alone. There are billions of people on this planet who are now awake. And Zbigniew Brzezinski, earlier last year, he bemoaned that, that it doesn't mean people have all the answers, but they're now awakening and, and, and shattering the tiny little little cave uh, that they've been put into, and that, and that we stand not just with those that are alive, but literally with all other truth seekers and lovers of liberty throughout history, and that's the most valuable thing in the world. It's the only thing that's going to fulfill is fulfilling your destiny and being a good person. I, I'm, I'm totally with you, you know, and, and I think all of us, uh, again, I want to emphasize, you know, that some of the most profound things in my life have been triggered by people who think themselves insignificant. And, man, I just can't say it enough, is we beat ourselves up pretty thoroughly, pretty regularly, because we're sort of the worst critics of ourselves. But cut yourself just a little bit of slack. And if you know your problems, try and overcome them. But more importantly, take control of the things you can take control of. And that's where you start to build your confidence back. You know, on these issues, if somebody asked you or me years ago when we began our work, uh, and, and, it, and it laid out for us the path we would have traveled, we would have looked at them like they were absolutely out of their minds. <laughs> And yet, by stepping into what we could do, uh, we discovered all these other things that we could do. And I think that's the, the, the true nature of this experience. And, you know, the, the backdrop of uh, technologies and the evil in the world that so much of, of, of what we've had to talk about, you know, that's disturbing to folks. But again, it's the spirit in which the information is delivered, like we were talking off air. You know, we're there to try and awaken the public to the issues that are important uh, in this day. And, and in doing so, we take a lot of responsibility. I mean, what people do as a result of my words, uh, I don't just let go of it. I know, Alex, you don't either. That, those words that influence other people's actions make me partially responsible for what others do. And that so was my next point. Good. I talked about that before you were on today. The only thing that freaks me out, and it's not even freaks me out, it's the only area where I get butterflies, is that I genuinely am affecting people and I can see the growth curve, it's exponential right. and, and, and and then I look at myself and I do beat myself up and I say you've got to do a better job, look at the effect you're having, but then I realize look all I'm doing is the best job I can and, I'm, and I've got a good heart I'm going in the right, right direction and so I just turn it over to God Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there, absolutely with you there and, and, uh, and you know and I tell you, you know, even uh, those of us that do this work every day you know, we experience all the same kinds of things that everyone else does. Uh, you know, no one's free of anything in terms of uh, tension in their lives. In fact, busy people tend to have very complex uh, lives, uh, and that's kind of the way we thrive, I think. <laughs> but again, opportunity for change is there. These technologies offer, offer us great opportunities to enhance our possibilities, and that's a lot of the work that I'm taking in the in, in this last year and moving forward, I, I stopped lecturing for a couple of years, and I may get back into a little more of that as time moves on, but mainly to get a focus back on sort of a chance to look at what I've been doing, look at the effect of it, and then saying, you know, what are the most important things that I need to address? I now? was about to say, I haven't, for some reason... Uh, you know, years blipped by, and I hadn't called you in over a year to have you on. And then I call you, and, and I don't want to say you sound changed, but I think like everybody, you sound accelerated in the trajectory you were already on, uh, but you sound even more powerful. I, I, feel, I feel like the direction is clear for me, and the opportunity now to really offer encouragement and to try and take the messages that we've been giving on technology and show the other side of that sword and really start to focus more on, okay, these are the things that can be done to us. What can we do uh, ourselves? What can we do to uh, open up uh, the understanding of what's happening and, more importantly, perhaps trigger uh, some of our own latent capabilities? So going with. off of defense onto offense. Absolutely. Let's, let's look for the tools for transformation, the things that allow us to move forward, and I'm not, you know, there's there's two sides to this. There's a mechanical side of things we can make and build that will help us be healthier, think clearer, you know, do those kinds of things. And then there's a spiritual.
social component that is an individual component that we have to search out in our own ways. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not, that is not my direction in life to define that for folks. But having said that, uh, anyone that I've ever met that's done anything uh, decent in the world has a deep underlying religious and philosophical underpinning, and that matters. Um, well, that was my next point. We've got to get to calls here or, or hold you longer if you can do it. Yeah. Uh, but I promise to get to these. I'm not bashing atheists. I don't dislike atheists. Right. And, and, and I run into some uh, who are overall good people, but on average, not as good. And, and, and they can always use aberrant state-driven examples of religion being used sure. as a cover or an envelope for bad. But uh, the people I see facing down real corruption now... I mean, they have an underlying you know, tie into the universe. They understand right. that justice, uh, you know, the universe bends towards uh, justice. And I see the globalist always pushing an atheistic view, right. uh, a cynical view. Uh, and But then when I actually study the New World Order, they are secretly extremely right. religious, but what would right. be called the dark side. Right. I agree with that. And, and again... The recognition of what we are is, is fundamental to the change. You know, we're talking about changing the way the world works. We have to change the way we operate as individuals by recognizing first and individually what we are and then begin to act. And, and as we do, we learn more about what we're capable of. Just like a little child, it doesn't end. Uh, it, it continues. That's the whole living experience. And, and we're, we, we keep being told, stop thinking, stop contemplating stop just fall into the herd and that is not what humans are intended to be and and this globalist elitist type of attitudes this paternalistic type of attitude uh needs to end and, and and i think again it's been with us a long time you know religions tend to be corrupted usually a generation or two after as people discover the mysteries within the religion within the philosophy that actually you know, science doesn't operate in a vacuum either. You know, God created order, and, and out of that comes, uh, in one sense, uh, some science. And, you know, it helps us understand the creation, but it isn't the creation in and of itself. And that, I think, is, again, getting back to this basic thing about changing the world requires changing ourselves. And getting rid of fear and worry is the first step in making that change. And then opening up our eyes uh, to the things that we can do and acting on them and seeking I believe it's important to seek the face of God. Whatever that means to you, um, I think that is incredibly important. And in the seeking, it's the finding. Um, and I'm not going to tell people... Because that opens you up. I mean, now the box is gone. When you start yes. to seek it, then you realize that you can see much further than you thought. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and then you also get this recognition you're not alone. And then you start to recognize a little bit about what is possible. As you start to run into what you call coincidences and you realize they're not coincidence at all, you start to do things that all of a sudden the resources appear when you didn't think there were any. Those are, you know, that's, that's miraculous living, and it starts with a changed attitude and a changed outlook. And it is a struggle every single day to change who we are, but it is critically important to recognize that's what life is on this planet. From the time we're born to the time we die, it's an evolution. It's a recognition of our strength. Exactly. The globalists try to create an artificial system where on the surface there's no struggle. Right. But in that is actually the death, you know, of uh, your individualistic drive. It is through the struggle that we are empowered. Absolutely. And, in fact, that's our best learning environment. And, you know, in the one sense, you know, we're, we're going through a rough time in the economy. We're going through a lot of rough times around the country. And we see the awakening. And the awakening happens because that's when we recognize our own strengths because it's either die or live. We have to make choices. And then we start to recognize the neighbors that we have around us who we never even saw before, who, who have their hand out and always did. Um, that's where the change starts. Well, beautifully said. Let's take some calls and do one more short segment because Doc's got to go at 30 after, and I really want to get to these calls, but what a profound interview. And I talked to the Doc. Uh, it was his idea, but it's funny. At the same time, I've been thinking about folks to fill in more often when I'm working on films or going out of town, and he just volunteered. Hey, I could fill in sometime. So we're getting a great list of folks, the health ranger, Dr. Nick Begich, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, Lou Rockwell. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to uh, John in Colorado. John, you're our first caller for Dr. Nick Baggage. Yes, hi. How you doing? Good. You got a question for him? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm an electronics 
technician, and uh, I just love what you guys are talking about today. I've always been interested in physics and quantum physics and stuff like that. But anyway, um, the question I had was, uh, does HARP use a particular frequency? Yeah, it, it does, and it, it, it's, a, it's in the high-frequency range, but it covers, because you have the technical background, you can manipulate the primary signal and create a secondary effect, which actually gives you the range of 16 decades of frequency, which covers everything from ultra-low to visible light. Is that the and, modulation? Yes, this is by modulating it or pulsing the signal to create varying effects and the coupling with the ionosphere to utilize it for creating effects. But it's essentially a high-frequency transmitter. If you, you can go to the official HARP website and get the specific frequency. I don't have it right in front of me, but again, it's, it's the narrow band of high frequency that's used then to create this larger effect. Going back to that question, I never had time to jam in, and then we'll get a, another quick one and go to break, come back with uh, uh, other callers. But why are so many of these towers near the poles? I mean, is oh. it easier to manipulate there? Well, you want to be close to where the magnetic field lines intersect the Earth, which is at the poles, and you also need a high uh, available source of energy. And, of course, uh, in Alaska, we have the uh, oil and gas fields of the North Slope. Twenty-five percent of all the undiscovered oil in the world is in the uh, Arctic, and so that's important. But the magnetic field line locations is the critical element. The closer they are to the ground, the easier it is to inject energy into them, uh, much more efficient. Is there any evidence they're actually sucking some type of energy source out of the polar vortex? Well, that's, you know, that's a question that has not been adequately answered. And there's really a question of whether they can tap energy out of the ionosphere, which is a... Yeah, because you, I mean, you have those magnetic fields, correct, coming in at that point into the atmosphere and into the pole. We'll be right back with more calls. Great question, John.